Hey everybody, welcome to uh, the November Podcast, episode 3, which is going to be um, pretty much uh, a night shift edition. Not filmed during the night, but, well, actually, that's not true. It's three, almost 4 in the morning, so yeah, it's definitely filmed during the night, but um, it's going to be focused around people who have the fun job of working night shift from every kind of from retail to hospitality to medical to um security everything of interest that could be interesting uh from people who work kind of night shift it's i think it's a it's an area that a lot of people do work that a lot of people do forget about at the same time like a lot of industries are 24 hours a lot of places supplying and restock and pretty much reset everything back to zero so the next day can start again and i think that does get lost in a lot of people especially now with covid a lot of that prep and a lot of being able to even though some businesses are closed some establishments can't open up there will still be people manning buildings there will be still people answering uh, guests and customer emails and things like that so night shift is usually an area that covers that quite well also, it's uh, not a job that everyone likes to do. This is episode three, and it's going to be the Night Shift Edition 1, just, just to make things more complicated. But what I've already spoken to quite a few people and a lot of people on the subreddit, uh, Night Shift, which is an incredible resource for people that do work uh, insane hours like myself that, you know, give a bit of help, a bit of tips and tricks, you know, to get into some kind of pattern of some kind when it comes to sleeping and relationships and everything else of which we will all dive into. So episode three is going to be uh, with me, pretty much. Introduce you to myself to speak about night shift work if you're somebody who does it and why I would be qualified to uh, speak on such things. So yeah, oh, I suppose I better tell you about me, I guess. Um, for the last 12 years, I'm 32 now, Last 12 years, I have worked majority through night shift. Um, everything from retail to hospitality um, to some security to, you know, various various roles uh, from London to Scotland. So it's been, um, yeah, so lots, of, lots of events, lots of stories, lots of uh, incidents, just, you know, things that you wouldn't normally get involved in, in a, a nine to five job which i and maybe a few other people some people on night shift like love because it suits them down to a t i've never thought i would crave a nine to five job <laughs> or just something with a bit of structure to it that doesn't decimate any kind of outside life outside of night shift uh, so which is what we'll kind of talk touch on as well because it's it definitely takes its toll um constantly doing nights all the time and having to prioritize sleep or just resting normally over family events christmases birthdays just being awake for phone calls and what i think and maybe some people will agree and maybe some people have more have people in that life so it's a bit more understanding to them like family who just don't quite realize that when you get in when you're doing like a seven till seven shift or an eight till eight shift you get in at eight in the morning you are dead asleep hopefully if all goes well by like 12 one o'clock and that's when family members start phoning you or they even phone you like three or four o'clock when you're one needing those extra hours just to asleep and they're either annoyed they can't get hold of you or they're annoyed you haven't replied back yet or just things like that and you kind of realize and you kind of have to not come across as an asshole but at the same time you need to sleep or you can i mean i've had things happen in the last couple of years that were horrible um like you know, events that uh happened to me purely from uh lack of sleep purely just from lack of sleep um and that was down to me trying to fit too many things into uh, my life as well as trying to balance a night shift. And I immediately had to step back from that and stop a few things. And I suffered for it for quite a while. Um, also, when speaking to other people, dive into things like mental health, which is 
hugely important, but I feel like is is becoming the the craze at the moment to talk about and address because it does affect a lot of people in major ways. And to be, if you've got a team around you during the night, then it's not too bad. You have things to share with. You have uh, moments that you can moments to share. Yeah, some of that um, that you can all experience together, and it's not so bad. Whereas doing maybe a lone night shift, so I know a couple of office security workers that sit in a big building for anywhere up to nine to twelve hours every night, and yeah, you keep yourself busy. You all have things to do, checklists, firewalks, and whatnot. But it's it just the mentalness of that alone is so taxing on your brain and your body and on your life, pretty much. Um, there's a lot of a lot of companies do pay extra for night shift workers. I've only experienced that in very few places that I've worked for, where there's like a night premium, um, and even then, it's pretty poor because um, you don't you don't just sacrifice the days that you are there at work. You sacrifice the day before and the day after every single week. Um, to readjust yourself, to try and get some kind of normality, you lose your days off easily because there's no kind of social norm to night shift out there right now um, that can accommodate it that well. You are, I mean, I'm, I'm up here at four in the morning because I'm staying up tonight so I'm sleeping all day yesterday, staying up tonight because I'm back on night shift tomorrow night and that's, yesterday was gone, tonight, it's, tonight there's no one up now, I'm alone, it's yeah, it sounds, I'm making it sound worse than it is, but I've been doing it for a long time, but I just, I know it's very taxing, so yeah, but there's also fun moments, there's fun times, you do unfortunately work through, like, I mean, me specifically, I work for a hotel, um, one of the night managers there, and you are not so much last year, 2020, we, I can thankfully have as a bit of a write-off when it comes to the general public. And if you're somebody who works in hospitality or retail, this last year sucked for jobs and retainment. There has been lifelines like furlough and job retention, but some companies did take, some companies definitely took the opportunity to get rid of staff they didn't want. They definitely took the opportunity to save and scrap a bit of money which I get, but also at the same time, there's, there's opportunities. It's everybody. It sucks for everyone. And if you can accommodate your staff, accommodate the staff. You know, you had hotels up north in Scotland that were throwing people who lived in the staff accommodation there out. Um, even though there was job retention, there was grants, there was tons of stuff from the government. Still is from the government to keep them going. Um, and that the hit on your reputation from that alone is is going to screw you over. So most people are most people have been good though. So. 2020, I say we can have a bit of a write-off. But 2019 and everything before that, if you worked in hospitality, if you worked in retail, then you know individuals can be incredible. They can be heroic. They can be lovely. They can make your day and your night. The general public and a whole? Uh, not so much. The, the general public is... general public is bad to a point where it comes down to a few. If that you know makes sense. It's like you're kind of just you're kind of labeling the whole general public as is bad based on the actions of a few. But it's uh yeah, they always seem to be everywhere and a lot of the time. So my my position is to deal with uh complaints, people, issues, dramas, uh medical, security, first aid, police going back and forth with uh, emergency services, calling them fire, um, evacuations, um, anything, anything that goes, pretty much your, your person's in charge there from uh, nighttime until handing everything over to the morning. Um, and you want to hand it over as fresh and as ready to go as possible. So the last couple of hours of my shift right now are basically just making sure any issues are dealt with, reports are done, Audits are filled, um, sheets are signed off, and there's nothing left, nothing left outstanding that can be taken care of there and then. And if you're fortunate to work for a company where they let you get on with that, because it can be really difficult to juggle. 
you're not only juggling the staff, but I remember I was speaking to a friend of mine who works in another hotel, and he, he works night shift there. And there's no kind of function suites. There's no conference halls there or anything. So it's there's not a lot of day traffic, but it looks busy because maybe the restaurant part is busy or the bar part is busy. But what a lot of people don't realize is when people stay in hotels or they stay in other places, they're not there during the day. They're doing whatever they came to the area to do. They're visiting family, sightseeing, whatnot. They're away from the hotel. During the night, 95% of the time, if not more, everybody is there in that building asleep or awake or drunk or whatever you do in hotel rooms during the night. So it's, everyone is there. So you don't really have just the the incidents that could happen with fuel, with alcohol, drugs, whatever's going on. But it's a full house that you are in charge of. So if you are fortunate enough to have your upper management, your bosses that are happy for you to make decisions there and then, as long as you don't do something stupid, I mean really stupid, like idiot stupid, then you, you're fortunate to have a bosses that let you go on with your job because it really is difficult. It's a balancing act. You can have, and I guess, you can have nights where nothing happens. And those are wonderful nights. You can go on with admin, you can do role, you can update staff, stuff, go over training, catch up on admin, which will get hindered on busy nights where you're dealing with people, dealing with the general public, then maybe dealing with emergency services, then filling out statements. And then there's like going to court dates outside of your work as well. Um, <clears throat> just out of, because of busyness, I found myself finishing shifts, then driving to courthouse and spending like five or six hours there. Then if I can time it right, getting to go home afterwards and go to sleep and not have to work that night. But usually it's, you know, if you know, you know. So yeah, it can be, I'm trying to <laughs> try to put anybody off night shift, but it can, it's, it's, um, it's a lot. And I think more people, and that's just me, and that's, and that, I'm on the, the not so extreme side of things. Sure, we deal with uh, domestic violence sometimes, we deal with alcoholics, we deal with family issues. Um, you know, it's a, hotel, it's a hotel, so people will book rooms and do it. And this is, I'm not talking about this year, I'm talking about previous years kind of collectively. And I worked in backpacker hostels down in London as well. So it's there's a big selection of tourists, locals, and you, it doesn't matter if you're in a, in a youth hostel or a backpacker hostel paying 12 quid a night or you're in a four-star hotel paying £200 a night, you get the broad stroke of everything. So, and I mean that everywhere. You deal with the same stuff everywhere, just some places have more efficiency of dealing with it, tools handy, um, staff numbers, that kind of thing. So yeah, it's uh, It's interesting. So I am not, as I was saying, I'm not on the extreme end of things. I am on the uh, you know, the relatively okay side of things. And I've got enough experience under me now to know how to handle, I would like to say, the majority of incidents or things that happen properly. Hopefully. <laughs> um, yeah. So that's a bit about me. Um, what I want to do is speak to you. Um, I will be speaking to a few people from the, uh, the subreddit um, R Night Shift who have been, I've got quite a few messages that go back and forth with people. I want more. Um, some of them have been, are interesting. They might not think are interesting, but you you discover that, you know, as Night Shift, anything can happen, even if you're somewhere by yourself or if you're like, like a baker during the night or if you're security somewhere or if you are, you know, like IT, there's call center IT support that I know that work by themselves at a big office during the night and crazy stuff has happened happened there but when they're by themselves it always happens so and a few of these are going to be interesting also i think it's a really good resource i mean that subreddit alone is a really good resource but this video could hopefully be uh or these subsequent videos can be a good resource for people who maybe found themselves in a night shift job who can't balance a sleeping pattern who can't balance dietary or eating or gymming or just trying to stay as healthy as best they can. I struggle. My weight goes up and down like nothing else. I struggle to sleep a lot. And I've been doing it for 12 years. I still struggle. And this is me trying to balance relationships, house, commitments to family, um, my this filming, photography, things like that. Is, um trying to balance that on days off where I'll be awake is a struggle. Um, I've missed appointments with friends, 
we plan on doing a couple of editing days and I just came home and I got to sleep for four or five hours. I'll be up at, I'll be up at noon and I'll be able to continue through the day where I've just blank out, slept through the whole day, slept through every alarm, slept through everything and um, missed it. So I've missed appointments with friends. I've missed shoots. I've probably missed out on other opportunities I just didn't know about because um, I was asleep. The mailman. My lovely mailman who I love to bits. The, he's very nice, the ones I've had. But they come bang on between 12 o'clock and 1 o'clock. It's either on the dot at 12 or on the dot at 1 every day. And without fail, I do get waking up for sure. A few occasions I've slept right through, but there's always a bang at the door for something. So, yeah. Again, a social aspect that doesn't quite fit to night shift workers um, in any way. So, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> Trying to be upbeat about the whole thing is proving to be very difficult. But this year um, has been a massive change where a lot of hotels and whatnot have been shut. So, but night shift still, I started to be there to man the building during the night. We still had to run opera audits during the night. We still had to move thousands of reservations from cancelled days due to COVID from during the from during that summertime all the way through to like this year now. And even now it's still ongoing. So it's... For a while, a lot of people didn't get to keep their jobs, which sucked a lot. A lot of lovely people. And, um, yeah, for a long time you didn't know if your job was really safe, especially when it comes to hospitality, especially right now. Um, yeah, it ain't great. But very thankful to still be in a job. Even though I'm sitting morning about night shift, I'm very happy to be in it, um, even with its ups and its downs. So, the first ever night shift role was in a backpacker hostel down in London. It was a big hostel. And um, I lived in there as well at the time, which was so dangerous. Not in a physical way, but as in for my liver, more than anything else. Um, oh, God. Um, tons of stories. I've got a scar in this eye from that place. Um, I've got... <sighs> There's a lot of stories which I will be kind of bleeding out through all these videos because I wanted to share it with someone else. So the idea is I'll be speaking to someone, they'll share what they do and their techniques and their issues that they have and some funny stories along the way if there is or scary stories or even funner stuff. And I'll be throwing in a few of mine along the way from over, from the very beginning, the last 12 years till now. So, Yeah. I kind of hope you uh, you join me on this. I think it'll be quite fun. Um, hopefully I won't waffle on too much, but I feel it's uh, it's going to be quite important. So if you are interested in having a chat with me about your job, whether it's night shift, it doesn't matter any industry, I'm always curious about maybe something that I haven't even thought of, then message me uh, here or there's an email in the uh, description below. Email that. Uh, so hopefully you can join me. Hopefully you can be a part of it. And uh, I want to try and get some really interesting people, not just maybe people that work in night shift as well, but oh, maybe medical professionals who have done maybe studies with people in night shift who can maybe shed a bit of light on what happens to your body over, let's say, a decade <laughs> um, with night, when it comes to working night shift and see how, see what that does to you. That could be petrifying. <laughs> And maybe some people who can are talking about laws when it comes to accommodations and uh, rights for people who work night shift and more than what are currently there because it's not it is floundered and it is abused by so many employers. Um so yeah, I'm gonna stop waffling on again and hopefully you can join me on a couple of fun videos and um yeah, should probably get some sleep. And um, thank you for watching if you've made it this far. I'll see you on the next episode. Have a good one.